What's French made from metal and a lot of fun to assemble? That would be the Micro Delta rework and today we're reviewing it. How's it going guys? Welcome back to Maker's Muse. So this is the Micro Delta rework, a Delta 3D printer kit produced by Emotion Tech. It has a cylindrical build volume of 150 millimeters in diameter by 200 millimeters high and has a heated bed and runs 1.7 millimeter filament through a Bowden Drive hexagon hot end. The machine is ridiculously well designed out of sheet metal and injection molded parts and there's a few components which are 3D printed but nothing that will really cause any sort of problems in terms of reliability. The interface is a small click wheel and a small uh, LCD screen and you can print tethered to the machine through their own flavor of Repetier or you can just chuck some G-code onto the SD card which is a full size SD which is always nice. Being a kit you have to assemble the Micro Delta rework yourself and you have to do pretty much everything. Even the extruder and hot end assemblies need assembly but luckily the instructions are incredibly detailed. Actually some of the best I've ever seen. And even following the French version I had no trouble putting this machine together. Considering all I remember from learning French in school was asking how to go to the bathroom, that's pretty impressive. The print bed itself is fixed in place, you can't remove it and there's no springs to level it, but that's okay, you don't need to. The machine itself comes with a touch probe which I jammed in here thinking it'd be easy to remove and it's not so I'll just leave it there. But the touch probe itself will touch the bed in various points and allow you to do an automatic bed level and then the machine itself also has a Z height offset calibration routine. This does work great and although you can do it while tethered to Repetia, I found it just easier and more reliable to do it via the machine itself directly. Filament loading on the Micro Delta rework is a little bit tedious with the design of the extruder making automatic loading quite slow because your extruder is up here and your hot ends here. So if you just disable the motor power, you can force it through yourself with the included knurled knob, which is nice. Just be sure to give the filament a point so it enters the hot end correctly and be cautious during withdrawals that no filament dags get stuck. I did have to unscrew the PTFE lining a few times to remove little wisps of PLA that were causing the machine to jam up. The design or lack thereof of a spool holder meant I put this simple 3D printed spool holder on the top. They recommend it being like sideways and I've never been a fan of sideways spools as it tends to have the filament jam underneath it and make the print fail. Uh, especially if you're printing with retraction which you will need to do on this machine. You see during my testing I had severe stringing issues. Uh, even at low print temperatures and I tried a range of PLAs including some that they provided which is quite nice by the way But I just couldn't couldn't really solve the problem. So I did end up going with their stock uh, profile in Repetia despite um, Being quite simplistic and I did get a pretty good result in the end out of this pink eSun PLA So these next tests were to see what sort of surface finish I could produce off this printer and with this Gaia Anderson cat, there's some stringing still and a little bit of surface inaccuracies, nothing too severe. And with the right lighting, you can also see the salmon skin effect that you do get on deltas. So what salmon skin is, is it's a micro-stepping artifacting on the surface due to the three motors moving in tandem for the X, Y, Z directions. The, the uh, Emotronic board, which is what it's called, is a 32-bit board, which does help and go a great, far, great distance into stopping salmon skin for being so obvious, but it's something to keep an eye out, when, out for when shopping for Delta 3D printers. I wouldn't go for anything with an 8-bit board, 32-bit at a minimum, and you want something with very high micro-stepping to kind of alleviate that salmon, salmon skin artifacting. This Mad Hatter model, which is modeled by Tanya, was one of the more com complex models that I threw at it, and the support planet was a bit brutal because I was using the rudimentary support options available to me in Repetia, but overall it's a pretty good representation of this fairly challenging print, and I think the Micro Delta rework did a pretty good job on it. The tolerance test, however, was kind of disappointing. I only got the 0.5mm uh, gap clear, and although if I did try to fine-tune settings, I might get it get it to clear up the 0.4, but I don't think you're going to get much further, much further than that. Your results may vary, but I wouldn't try using this machine for extremely fine detail, accurate parts. I just don't think it's actually capable of it. 
There are a few areas of the Micro Delta rework that I think need attention and I wasn't overly happy with, starting with the bushings that are used instead of linear bearings. So the machine uses bushings in these injection molded housings to move, uh, to give the axes movement. And I found if I tightened up one of these rails too much, the entire side would bind up. And I think that's just because of the, the manufacturing tolerances of the sheet metal, you can't get it perfect. And for some reason that one side was just out enough that if I tightened everything up to be completely rigid, it would jam up. So oil helps, but in the end, this rod, yeah, I can't remember which one it is, but this, this rod is always slightly loose compared to the rest. And that may be influencing my print quality, but there's not much I can do about it, unfortunately, unless I went in and actually drilled out some holes. Speaking about drilling out holes, the actual tapped ends of these rods, some of them weren't tapped far enough and I had to substitute shorter M5 bolts to put them into the rods correctly. The ones provided were a bit too long and I couldn't tension them down all the way. The wiring loom does have a bit of a tendency to get caught up under the carriage and the homing switches, but I've been playing with it and it seems to have stopped doing that now, but it does definitely dangle quite precariously and you do have to make sure it's not catching on anything during the printing process. And something a bit random as well is this silicon boot or sock that goes around the hexagon hot end. Um, this machine during printing was making some really nasty smells. And I mean, I'm used to the 3D printing smells, but this was pretty accurate and pretty, made me feel a bit nauseous actually. And I tracked it down to this boot. So I'm not sure what's going on. I'm not sure if this is an isolated case, but I took it off and put some Kapton tape on instead and the smell stopped. So just be cautious of that. I'm always a bit, bit, air, a bit wary of high temperature silicons. I'm not really a big fan of them, so I'm not too fussed about removing that. Something some people will be interested in as well is it appears that the sheet metal can accommodate a second extruder if you're interested in dual extrusion. It may be a possibility in future for you with the Micro Delta rework. So final thoughts on the Micro Delta rework from Emotion Tech. The kit was an absolute joy to assemble. So huge high marks for that. Tinkerers who want a Delta kit that won't leave them begging for more in terms of details and the instructions, look no further. But the price does need to come into consideration. It's currently priced at 333 euro for export or 400 with VAT, which is about $400 USD or 500 Australian dollars. So the price is justified by the use of injection molding and sheet metal, but it's definitely up there against the CR10, Wanhao i3 and other essentially ready to run Cartesian 3D printers. So if you're not interested in the assembly process, it might be a more logical choice for you to go with one of those instead and I've definitely got more usable build volume to boot. But a big thanks to Emotion Tech for sending me the Micro Delta rework to review. I've had a lot of fun playing with this machine, and as with all reviews here on Makers Muse, no money has changed hands, and everything expressed in this video has been my own personal opinion. If you'd like to pick up one of these for yourself, I'll put a link down in the description, non-affiliate. And if you're new to Makers Muse, I'd love to have you subscribe so you don't miss any future 3D printing tips, tricks, reviews, and projects. My name's Angus, and I look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Catch you later, guys. Bye. In the latter half of the 20th century, a man has been brought into deep space. He has placed satellites into orbit.